Okay, we're just going to do a uh, quick recap of um, the tools we covered today, Intro to Grasshopper and Surface Panelization, <coughs> based on the midsole design of this uh, New Balance shoe. So I just have a new Rhino document um, where I have placed a background bitmap of a shoe um, by typing background bitmap um, and placing an image. Um, after I place the image, I'm using the interpolate curve command or interp curve, um, I N T E R P, to draw these two curves um, representing the boundary of the surface that I want to create. Um, so these two curves look something like that. Um, and interpolate curve is something. Um, it's it's a good idea to practice a bit. Um, you can also find it here. Um, so it will build a curve through specific points that you select. For example, here, um, and then you just press spacebar to end the curve. You can then turn control points on by typing P on, and then edit the curve to more closely align to the geometry that you are after. In this case we've got a top curve and a bottom curve and um, they're not connected at the ends but that's fine because we're just going to build a loft surface and that will fill in, uh, it will bridge a surface between the two. So first I'm just going to hide this background bitmap because I don't need to look at it anymore. I have the basic outline that I want to follow. So I'm going to turn visible to off uh, or to no. And so now I'm just left with two curves. I'm going to take these two curves and select them and type loft. Just a normal loft is fine. Okay. And if I have my ISO curves turned on I can get a rough idea of the topology of the surface that's just been created. Again, this is just a flat two-dimensional surface. Um, in, pr in perspective view, it looks something like this. Um, and it's this surface that I'm going to bring into the Grasshopper document. Um, alternatively, I could have started with the curves and built a, a loft surface inside of Grasshopper, but um, I'm going to going to do it this way um, because I might want to trim the surface later on. I'll talk about that later. So I'm going to bring this surface into Grasshopper and again not really thinking of it as importing and exporting but rather Grasshopper is something that's referencing um, the geometry in the Rhino document. So I just need to build this reference um, and I'm going to do that with a surface component. And what I want is this black hexagon surface. And all that's going to do is just bring that reference of that geometry into Grasshopper. I'm going to do that by right-clicking on Surface, Set One Surface, and then I can see in the command line of Rhino is asking me for a surface to reference. So once I click on that surface, it's now referenced in the Grasshopper document. If I click on it, it turns green, just as the uh, preview color. And... Um, that's all I needed to get from Rhino at this point. So I'm going to select all this geometry and type Control H to hide. And now I'm left with just the uh, lofted surface that I've now brought into Grasshopper. So what I need to do next is uh, make basic panelization of this surface. Um, and I'm going to do that using two components, um, one called Isotrim and another one called Divide Domain. Um, Isotrim is called Subsurface when it's dropped into the document and Divide Domain, the one I want is the uh, the one that has the square root or not square root but the square afterwards um, and it's the the icon of the square being subdivided. So what I do is I drag the surface into the eye, the surface representing the basic domain um, and then I drag the same surface to uh, the subsurface component to be subdivided. So what's happening here is that the um, divide domain component is 
giving us a list of values that represent the domains to uh, to chop the surface into pieces and then subsurface is actually splitting the original surface based on the guidelines given by this divide domain component. So when I connect them together I see a 10 by 10 subdivision essentially a grid of um, 100 surfaces. But this isn't really what I want and this is the default from Grasshopper 10 to 10 I'm going to make two new sliders um, just by double clicking and typing in a number. So here's a slider um, for the U direction. Um, I'm going to change this to 3. And I can make a new slider. I'm going to type 30. And that'll be my V divisions. So now I have a 3 by 30 uh, grid on this original surface. And if I hover over the output of surface, I see that I have 90 um, untrimmed surfaces coming out of this component, which is what I want. Next up, I need to, um, assuming that this was not a flat, but actually a curved surface, I need to find the center points and the normals for each of these 90 cells. So I'm going to do that by uh, first finding the... Um, evaluate surface uh, or using the evaluate surface uh, component and that will for each of these 90 surfaces this component will run 90 times and it will uh, find the point normal and frame at each of those um, for each of those 90 surfaces but we need to specify a UV coordinate uh, essentially a way of telling it that we're looking for these values but at the midpoint of each of these 90 surfaces. So I'm going to do that with um, an XYZ um, or a construct point component and even though this is supposed to construct a Euclidean coordinate we can trick Grasshopper into thinking that it's a UV coordinate. So the UV coordinate we're looking for is 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. So I'm right clicking and setting number on X and Y to 0 0.5. And I'm leaving Z alone. So what I get at the end is a point coordinate that looks like 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 comma 0, 0.0. And I'm going to drag that into my UV. However, because my domains were all funny, I get all these points elsewhere that don't really make any sense. What I need to do is reparameterize these 90 surfaces. Essentially that means taking them from whatever arbitrary domain they are currently at and mandating that the domain needs to be 0, 0 to 1, 1 uh, for each surface. I can do that in one fell swoop by right clicking on this surface. You can do it here or here, it doesn't matter. Right click and reparameterize. So now this has updated all the geometry based on the new parameterization that for each surface this is now a domain of 0 to 1 and then 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be exactly in the middle uh, of the domain. Um, I'm going to now turn off preview for everything except for these points and I now have 90 points and of course 90 normals and 90 frames. If your frames are larger or smaller, um, that's just because of the scale at which you're drawing, and um, it shouldn't actually matter. Um, okay, so next we're going to extrude these two points. Um, that will make a pyramid shape on top of each of these uh, cells. So we want the component called extrude point, and we need a, uh, a new point location. So we basically, I'm going to go back to perspective view. We can see all these points are flat. We need to move them um, in order to have a pyramid shape. Um, so we can do that with a move component. Um, and the geometry that we want to move are these points. And the translation vector, we want it to go along the normal vector. By default, the normal vector for each of these is 0, 0, 1. That means one unit in the up direction, um, Z being up in this case. Um, 
And so this would just make a pyramid of the same height for each of these um, each of these original surfaces. So that's good enough to to get this to work. So let's look at the extrude point component. It's asking for a base profile or surface, um, and it's also asking for a point to extrude to. So the point to extrude to are these points here that we just found. Um, we can turn those off. And then the surfaces that we want to extrude are these 90 surfaces coming out of subsurface. So we can just drag these over to here. And it ends up giving us these 90 pyramids, all of the same height at the moment. Um, so if we want to change this height, if we want them to not just go up by one unit, um, but by a, uh, a different value that we want to specify, we can insert here an amplitude component. So we'll just basically sever this, this cable um, and input a component called amplitude. Um, so we're going to basically change the length of the vector. This is what amplitude does. Um, it will set the length of the vector uh, without changing the directionality. So we still want to follow the normal vector, and we're just going to tell this normal vector, instead of 1, what it used to be, uh, we can even give it a slider for the moment. And then we're going to replace this translation vector. We're going to overwrite that with our new amplitude vector. So now this is going at an amplitude of 10. So it's now each pyramid is 10 times as high. We can change it to 5 as we wish. OK. Um, but what if we don't want the same amplitude for each of the cells? What if we want this to vary, um, like the New Balance example where uh, towards this part of the shoe, um, these are intruded um, while here they're protruding? Um, or was it the other way around? Uh, so anyway, we need to have some kind of um, geometry-based attractor system. So we'll talk about attractor systems a bit more, but this is essentially a method of differentiating um, in, a, in a gradation, um, differentiating geometry over a field. So what we need are attractor points. Um, so we can say, you know, the closer a cell is to this point, the the smaller the extrusion is. 